talk is uh, past Constantine, GCD computation and modular inversion. This is joint work by Dan Burns. Oh. This is a lot. Yep, working. Uh, this is joint work by Dan Bernstein and J Bo Jin Jang, and Bo Jin is going to give the talk. Um, okay, so uh, the ex executive summary of uh, this talk is that uh, we have fast and safe uh, GCD and inversions. So normally, we compute uh, the inverse in the field with p elements uh, using Fermat's Vito theorem. And this uh, is n cubed if uh, you are using school book multiplication. And something like n to the 2.6 uh, using Karatsuva and uh, n squared, uh, mostly n squared uh, if you are using FFT-based multiplications. So the next question is, uh, why are we not using extended Euclidean algorithm, which is roughly a factor of n faster? Typically, the answer is that we need constant time in our algorithms. So our algorithm is constant time, and it achieves n to the 1 plus small o of 1 bit operations. And it is simpler than previous variable time algorithms. There's no division subroutine between the two recursive calls. So there are some examples of uh, uh, modern uh, cryptography that needs inversions. There is the entry key generation, where we need to find the inverse in f3 of x over x to the n minus 1. OK, so for uh, HRSS, and that's uh, the cyclotomic polynomial. Um, we also need to find the inverse in uh, z over 2 to the kz of x uh, over x to the n minus 1, and which depends on another inversion in f2 of x over x to the n minus 1. And similarly, for n true prime key generation, that's another two different kind of inverses. And uh, for example, in uh, C side, uh, there is an inverse modulo a 511 bit prime. And uh, for all of these cases except this particular case uh, where the Fermat Vito theorem was too fast, we are able to improve the situation with our uh, algorithm. So let's take a look at uh, the Euclid Stevin algorithm, the extended GCD in F7 of X. So we have R0 and R1. You would recognize that these are um, digits from pi and e. And uh, we are getting sevens and eights because uh, some of times you get the result in non-reduced uh, form. So this is not a constant time algorithm because the ideal Euclidean step has a dividend that's one degree higher than the divisor and the remainder is uh, one degree lower than the divisor. But here, there is one step that's not ideal. So what does this mean? So if we look at this as a sequence of subtractions, uh, there are 15 coefficients, and we want to reduce it to one coefficient, the constant. So that sh there should be 14 steps, but there's one skip. So now there are 13 steps. The number of steps depends on the number of imperfections in our uh, uh, Euclidean sequence. So let's take a look again at the Euclidean subtraction stage. We start with a dividend of higher degree than the divisor. The regular subtraction stage subtracts from the dividend a correct multiple of the divisor. If the dividend leading term is zero, there's no problem. We subtract, make a dummy subtraction. We decrement the dividend degree, and if the divisor now has a higher degree, we swap the two polynomials. However, if there is a zero lead term for the divisor, we still need to decrement the divisor degree and do a dummy subtraction. And we need to do this uh, whether this 
happens or not because of constant time. So how did the existing constant time GCGs do it? They mostly kept the polynomials as arrays and kept the, trapped the degrees and they do the GCD in rising order from the constant time up. Now, here's a better way to do the subtraction stage. We can start the known bigger polynomial as a divisor. The reason to do that is we can ensure that its leading term is non-zero. We track only one number, which is the degree difference, the degree of divisor di minus the degree of the dividend. And we can reverse the polynomials to make sure that the leading term corresponds to the constant. So here's our subtraction stage, which we will call deep step. If delta is positive and the dividend has a non-zero leading term, then we will swap and negate delta. And then we will take an appropriate linear combination of the two polynomials. We will shift the dividend, which means divide by x, and increment delta. So what do we do exactly? The details of the computation, when we are doing a GCD with R0 and R1, or doing R1, uh, sorry, the inverse of R1 modulo R0, where degree of R0 is D and degree of R1 is less than D, we set up by making F the reverse of R0. And uh, the dividend, G, is x to the D minus 1, R1, of 1 over x. The degree difference we set to be 1. What we do now is we do 2d minus 1 dip steps, and we can collect the return values. That will give us the answer. So to make it uh, more clear, the dip step is considered a map of, of the set, the integers, times power series with non-zero constant terms times all power series to itself. And the dip step is given by the following formula. So there are two cases. One is happens if delta is greater than zero and G has a non-zero co constant term and the other formula takes place otherwise. So this is uh, the example we gave and please notice that we start out with one polynomial of degree seven and one degree polynomial of degree six, and after 13 terms, f stays constant. After 14 uh, attempts, uh, we have a zero for g. So like I said, after 2d minus one uh, deep steps, uh, we have the result. So what do we do to get time constant deep step? That's not too hard, and here are the steps to do it. We first make a mask, and uh, we uh, XOR the correct mask to F and G, and uh, we uh, XOR the correct mask to delta, and then there is a uniform second half. And we can do this with ABX2 instructions if necessary. So if we just do deep steps, so for example, for n true and n true prime rings, we can do inversion in f3 of x over x to the 700 plus x to the 699 plus plus all the way to x plus one. So n true HRSS original code had about 150,000 Haswell cycles. Now this algorithm tracks two extra indices compared to ours and it requires a variable scale, scaling by a x to the r at the end. And if, if we just use our given method, uh, this takes about 90 Haswell cycles. We can look also at n true prime key generation, which is mostly an inversion in 
f of 45, 91 of x over x to the 761 minus x minus 1. There is also an inversion in f3 of x over x to the 761 minus x minus 1. And originally, this takes 6 million cycles in the n true prime code. And if we use our code, it takes less than 1 million, 0 0.94 million cycles on the Haswell, to be exact. OK, so that's deep steps. And this is still an n squared algorithm. Um, first, let's take a look at, at the integer case. We have a radix 2 analog for the deep step. And we can consider this as a map from the integers times the toadic integers with an odd numbers and uh, the, all the toadic integers to itself. And uh, there's a formula here that gives the result. And uh, we can also, again, split this toadic deep step in two halves. First, there's a conditional swap. So delta fg gets mapped to minus delta g and minus f if g is odd and uh, delta is greater than 0. Notice that f is negated here. If we do not negate f here, the result may not terminate. And then for the, the next half, we eliminate. So we increment delta, and uh, we uh, make g, g plus f times g mod 2 over 2. We have a termination theorem which says that if f and g are k-bit, all, all that's needed is 2.883k to addic deep steps, and we will see a 0. And at this point, we will have the GCD, and we, we can compute the modular inverse. So we can make this a subquadratic GCD or modular inversion by doing the following recursion. This is simpler in structure than pr previous uh, subquadratic GCD and modular inversions because there's no middle division step. The transition matrix of diff steps to the n, delta fg, depends only on the bottom n bits or coefficients of f and g. The result is that what we can do is we can do half of the steps using half the precision. And then we update f and g using advanced multiplication usually FFT, and then we do half of the remaining steps. And uh, sorry, the remaining half of the steps. And uh, the result when we do this recursively is that the n deep steps takes time n times log 2 plus small o of 1 n when using FFT multiplication. So this is time constant. And uh, previously, two recursive steps sandwiching a division is what it looks like. The latter is necessary because you need this to ensure that there is progress. So the division is not naturally time constant. To make it time constant takes, a lo takes, a, some, prop, uh, takes some non trivial uh, modification. And the split is not even, and that makes it slower. Our algorithm is, has two equivalent recursive steps, and, there it, and uh, it's an even split, and there's no division step. So what are the results? The integer inversion results are, can be seen as follows. So for the 25519, um, prime, and, and on Intel CPUs, uh, we have uh, an 10050 cycles on the Haswell, 
an 8778 uh, on the Sky Lake and uh, 8543 on the Kabi Lake. And this is uh, like uh, 10,000 runs uh, using medians. The previously best known result is due to Nas and Sakar. And uh, you can see that their result is anywhere between uh, 5 to 10 percent slower. Now, this is not very much faster, and it requires much more complicated code. So you might say this is not quite worthwhile, and we agree. If that's the case, then it's, we shouldn't need uh, this, uh, this algorithm. However, if we look at smaller CPUs that doesn't have as big a multiplier, for example, the ARM Cortex-A7, which is a very common microcontroller, okay, a, a microprocessor, the, and we take the same uh, 255519 prime, and this takes about 35,000 uh, A7 cycles, and uh, compared to Fuji, Aranya, uh, this is about 40% faster. And if we treat a 511-bit prime like the one that's used in um, Seaside, however, this one is a pseudomersin prime, so that should be better for famous little theorem. And we can see that this is anywhere between uh, 50 to 120% faster. Finally, on the uh, n true polynomial inversion, um, you can see that our algorithm is about 10% uh, faster. So this is not much faster, but think of, think of it this way. Uh, the person who programmed the deep steps is Dan Bernstein, and uh, the guy who programmed uh, uh, the our algorithm is mostly me, so I mean, you should think that's an achievement. And what's left? There are more usage cases. So there's C site, and you can get integer inversions that's uh, between 1.5 to, to 2 times speed up. In, at PQ Crypt, uh, uh, the PQC standardization workshop, and the LIDA crypt developers said that they can get two times up to four times speed up. And our proof of the termination theorem uses exhaustive search, and we can find a prettier theorem. And uh, there are future work, and we can verify, try to verify our complex code. And uh, sometimes we can think we can use more inversions if the ratio of i over m is small enough. I think that's it, and I'll take any questions. Probably time for a quick question. Doesn't seem like it. Now? Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you had a feeling of how this uh, compares on very small binary fields to, say, powering up using normal bases for Itotsuji. I'm thinking in particular the inversion in the ASS box. And binary fields. Uh, that's an interesting question, but I would say for the most part that uh, for binary fields, uh, it's probably, uh, this, it probably gets, uh, takes a larger uh, polynomial for this to work, I think. Uh, I, I think uh, there is some, uh, some work uh, on like uh, Macaulay's uh, using like this similar uh, method, but I'm not sure if that fits your question. Thank you. Uh, one quick question. Uh, you're mentioning other uses, 
use, use such cases as uh, IDH, Seaside. Uh, that speed up that you mentioned, 2.5x, 2x corresponds to 64-bit machines, or because you're getting a, a better uh, performance for smaller machines, right? Right. So that speed up corresponds to 64-bit machines, the that large ones or the small ones? That is 64-bit machines. Okay, so in small yeah. ones you should get a, a better yeah. speed up, right? Yeah, so if we, I mean, when I actually take the time to uh, write a proper uh, code for that, yes. Uh, I, that should be better, even better than two, two to four times. Okay, great. Okay, let's thank Boying again.